Hello, good afternoon, and welcome to another edition of Women Issue. And I want to apologize for the delay, it was due to traffic. And today I've come with something extraordinary, something to talk about, something more interesting. And today I want to be talking about the effect broken home has on a child. And today I've got two lovely, special, beautiful guests with me. I know you will be wondering. It's not Halloween. I, I I know a lot of people be worrying, oh, it's not Halloween. Yeah, it's not Halloween. But there is a reason why they are dressed up like this. And to my right hand side, I've got Geisha, Geisha from North London. She's a writer, she's a song artist, and she writes songs to express herself and to tell a story. I just want to say thank you for coming today. You're and to my left hand side, I've got Eugene. Eugene is from Northwest London. Okay. Eugene is a visual artist, a performance yes. artist. That's right. And I want to say thank you for coming today. Pleasure. And today, I know most of you guys will be wondering why are they dressed like this? Why are they dressed in this way? I will go back to Eugene to, to talk about himself for us, you know, so we can know the reason why he's dressed up like this. Okay. Um, so, as you said, I'm a visual artist. And visual artist, as everybody knows, um, I'm, I'm, I'm part of the creed who draw and paint. Um, I create sounds, um, I make exhibitions, um, and a lot of my work look at um, social issues, um, or I like to, to treat social issues. And um, recently I've been doing a lot of work to do with knife crime, um, obviously because it's such a big thing in London at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, but looking back, I've also done work that looks into like um, terrorism, yeah. um, because obviously um, that's another thing, you know, whether it's ISIS, Al-Qaeda, Boko Haram, yeah. um, I've done works on that. I've also done works looking at um, the, the Libyan slavery situation. Wow. Yeah. So I really like to grapple with um, social issues. Um, but I look this way, um, as you said, because I'm a performance artist. I'm interested also in fashion. Um, I'm interested in theatre. And I think this is my way of um, enhancing a character or a personality um, that I think I already have. This is just the way of me bringing it out. Oh, um, and um, yeah, just having fun with it really. Oh, thank yeah. you so much. And I'm going to come back to you. So I'm just going to ask, what brought this up? You know, what got you interested in dressing up this way? Originally, I almost lost my way um, through being in a broken home. Mm -hmm. And I met a mentor who was just like Eugene and Coma. And he showed me that my artwork was really good and how to present it and how to um, get my things out there gave me hope. Mm -hmm. So then I started this journey and I saw a lot of things on the street. So my artwork, all of it came from all the experiences I may have been through mm -hmm. or seen around on the street. So eventually I became geisha. Mm, that's good, that's interesting. So if I'm a hoax, coming from the background of a broken home, how has it affected your life? It affected my life where, obviously, I had a mother, she was a very, very good mother, mm. and she did a really good job. But without father there, I didn't have that basis to, mm. you know, understand the world in the, in the way that you should when you have a mother and father. Yeah. So, um... I almost lost my way mm. in this world, and if I hadn't met that person, that mentor, you wouldn't be here today. Yeah, you know, I'm not sure what I would have done. I, mm. I wouldn't have went to university. I, I ended up because of that that um, particular person. Um, I ended up going to Central Saint Martins and studying theatre design. Oh, that's in good. A degree. Lovely. And if I hadn't met, I I don't know what I would have done. Mm. Thank you so much. Hey, Eugene. Yes. I want to ask you. Yes. How long have you been dressing up like this? Um, <laughs> I think um, probably since 1999 or 2000. Um, not like this, so I have changed personas. Oh. So what you see today is one of my personas. Um, so I have had different personas. Like how many of them? Um, I think possibly... It's funny because somebody wanted um, some pictures for a magazine the other day, and I think there was maybe about 19. Oh, well, that's impressive. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. 
So, has anyone walk up to you on the street to ask you why do you dress up like this? What do you intend to get yeah. from this? Um, I mean, absolutely. I, 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 I get it all the time. Um, you know, on our way here, we got it. We got people asking us questions in the train when we got up the train. You know, walking the high street to get here, um, and we just say to them that you know what, um, we're artists who are um, interested in pushing the boundaries. You know, we we all know what artists do, but who knows what artists can do? It's like we're trying to get into the future, if you like, yeah. and we're trying to open up a new way um, so that people can. Um, also be inspired enough to use their own imaginations, you know, yeah. and do their own thing. So it's about being brave, being bold, being yourself, mm -hmm. um, and just having fun and not being fearful. Because yeah. there's too much fear around, you know. The risk, yeah. So when do you discover this is where you want to be? Um, I don't think there was a time when I discovered it. I, I was always drawing and painting as a child, always. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, always. Um, and I remember um, back in Ghana where I grew up, um, I would, you know, the teacher would give us exercise books to copy, you know, to draw from, um, especially the images we were looking at. Yeah. And, um, you know, I remember my friends would do really lovely drawings and I'd be shocked, you know. Um, I'll do mine and when the, when the, when the results came in, because we used to do exams, um, they would get, you know, marks like 85, 89 and I was amazed. But when mine came, mine was like, you know, 98 or 99. Wow. <laughs> um, so that was when I noticed that I was good at this thing, and mm -hmm. but this is really, really young, and I've never stopped. I don't take breaks. I have things running through my mind all the time. I'm drawing all the time. I'm thinking of ideas all the time, but it's all so much fun, you know. So how has this helped you so far? Oh my goodness! I think when you look back, a little bit like um, Geisha said, when you're a young person growing up, you have so many different questions. You're experiencing different things that are uncomfortable things that are not fair, you know, things that happens in, in your family. Mm -hmm. um, and I think we're all looking for an escape route. Mm -hmm. And you I think right. if you can pinpoint your talent or your abilities or your interests mm -hmm. and to run with it, which is what I did, yeah. it frees you and it stops you from getting you know, involved in the wrong things mm -hmm. with the wrong friends um, because you create your own world. And mm -hmm. I think that's what it's allowed me to do. It's, it's made me me from a very young age and I'm very fortunate that I found this thing. Mm, that's um, good. So that's what I'll say. Uh, Thank you very much. No so Geisha, I want to ask you if anyone walks up to you from a not like it's someone that's come from a broken home but you know what I'm from a broken home and I want to try and put my life together so <coughs> in what way do you think you will be able to help that kind of a person? I would take this person and find their talents and told them that they can just like I was told that I can. Mm. Actually, I actually have done. There was a, a young lad and he says there's nothing he could do. He didn't have a mother or a father. Wow. He was in a home. And I says that you can, you have talent. And then now he's, he's in university. He started doing like DJing around. Oh, wow. Yeah, well done. That's good. That's good. I'm really, really proud of you. Well done. Well done. That's really good. So another question I want to ask is, I was yes. told, uh, from what we discussed earlier, that you guys work with community youth workers. Mm -hmm. So, you know, how long have you been doing that? Um, officially for about 10 years. 10 years? Yes. 10 good years? 10 good years. But wow. unofficially, I would say for about maybe 18. Um, I think I was having a conversation with you earlier, and I mentioned that back at school, I would... I would give up some of my time, this is when I was doing my A-levels, mm -hmm. and I would go into the art sessions, because the teachers noticed that when Eugene turned up, you know, the kids would pay attention and they would want to draw, and yeah. so I, I just gave my time to them. So I think, in a mm -hmm. sense, my interest in the youth started at that time, mm -hmm. um, and it's just continued. But like I said, I want to, I work with the youth because it's my way of giving back to the community, to, the community. to people. Yeah. I don't want to be, you know, flying high, achieving my, my dreams or my, my, my wants without pulling other people along. And I think young people yeah. are the best people to pull along. So if I may ask, I know you can help everybody from there, sure. but at least, like how many people have, been, have you been able to help? My goodness. <laughs> I think um, that, that I've never counted because I try not to look at it that way. Mm -hmm. But I think there's, there's so many, there's so, so many. I mean. I have an example similar to what Geisha said. You know, yeah. I've met young people who are 
literally um, have, have been introduced to me because they're from broken homes, mm -hmm. not knowing what to do, thinking they don't have a talent. Mm -hmm. um, and I think all it does is just, sh you show a little bit of interest. Mm -hmm. You talk to them. And whilst they're talking, if you really listen, you, you, you would notice that the things they will say that is particular and special to their personality. And mm. this is where you start to help them to the, draw the, out the, yeah, ta the, the talent. talent. Once you do that, I think it's endless. You know, I work, I work with people every week. Sometimes I get random phone calls. Oh, hello, Eugene. I've just heard that, um, you know, you're an artist and you do this and you do that. You know, would you be able to spend a bit of time to help me out? Mm. And if I have the time, I'll most definitely help them. If I don't, I will arrange it for another time. But I'm, I'm open to help, you know, any young person that wants to explore their inside, you know. Oh, that's good. And Gesho, I'm going to ask you, your costume, how did you come about it? Because here, yeah, I loved it. It looked like something from the 60s, you know what I mean? So, I loved it. How did you come about the costume? The costume, in a funny way, chose me. Okay. I went to various different art um, events mm -hmm. and slowly, slowly I started to do different looks and then um, one day somebody says that my look is definitely geisha and then I decided that I w because I'm a black geisha yeah. I want to do a contemporary version <coughs> okay. so um, yeah a lot of people have said about the 60s yeah it looks I, yeah, I, I do I do the like the 60s uh, <laughs> fashion um, mm, that's good so what do you want to achieve through this art I want to heal through my art, I want to heal others that might have gone through similar or other th issues that have happened in the world. That's I like, good. When I when I made my um, first album, my of music, I I was suffering at the time, mm. and it healed me. So I decided to put it out, and I, I hope that this does happen. So coming from a broken home as a child, how did that make you feel? It made me feel like the odd one out, I guess. Um, it made me feel afraid a lot. Um, I guess, uh, yeah, I had no father influence, I had no male influence, so I wasn't, I was like, a, I guess, like a little lamb to the wolves in the world. I see. I had a very, very, very good, powerful mother who she, she really, really, um, you know, taught me mm. a lot of things in the world. But of course, when you go out in the world and you're young, especially when you're a young girl, mm. things can happen. Mm. And, um, you know, um, some traumatic things happen mm. as well. Thank you very much. And um, Eugene, do you yeah. think most kids you work with mm. are a result of a broken arm? Yes, I mean, um I do some work. Um, I work at the the Summon Youth Centre, okay. um, which is a place I chose to specifically be at. You know, um, you know, many years ago, and um, it's a it's a place. Bermondsey is a place known to be a broken area. Yeah, Bermondsey. Yeah. Um, and that means you can imagine you do get a lot of young people from all kinds of backgrounds, mm -hmm. and um, you hear all kinds of stories. And um, I think I've heard so many. And what happens is you almost start to spot where a child is going to lead their story before they've even kind of got into the middle of what they're saying. Um, and with that comes um, my need to kind of want to help them out. You know? mm. um, and, um, you know, let's not forget that art is a, a therapeutic thing. Yeah. So, you know, we look like this and we do this, but we're also going through our own therapy. Yeah. This is kind of like a shield against the, the arrows the world throws at you. Mm. Um, and we, or I try to pass the same on, same thing on to the young people, mm -hmm. to let them know that, um, you know, wake up every day, be proud, put on your armor, um, and your armor mean and do whatever it is you want to do, because yeah. it is the thing that will save you away from, you know, the arrows that are that that life throws at you, wow. um, even if the arrows are coming from family. Yeah, um, mm, that's yeah. yeah, that's 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 yeah. that's good. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. In case you're just joining us today at the studio, I'm here with Ijin and Geisha from North London, and today we're talking about broken homes and how it affect every child. You know, 
So the reason why they are dressed up like this, it's who they are. And we're trying to talk about how every kid from broken home can find their balance, you know, can, can, find, can know who they want to be, you know, to be themselves, to achieve what they want to achieve. We don't want every kid from broken home to think this is, a, this is it for them. They cannot be anything, you know. Everyone has the right to be who they want to be. There is a talent in us. If only you can discover it. And I've got a union and Geisha here. They've worked with several kids. They've helped, I mean, they've helped kids to discover their talent, to discover where they are. You know, Geisha is from a broken home. She's had the experience. But today she's here because she made a choice that, you know what, I'm not going to let this affect me. I'm going to be who I want to be. I'm going to go for that thing that I want in my life. And I'm super, super proud of her for what she's done for herself and who she has become today. You know, you can call in the studio in case you're experiencing anything about broken home, probably you're depressed or you've been neglected. You can call us and talk to us. I've got two amazing people here that they can talk to you, they can help you, they can help you discover your journey. You know, they can help you find your balance. Don't give up, don't give up, don't give up. She did not give up, he did not give up. And today they are here doing wonderful things. You know, another thing I want to ask. Yes. From people that comes, the, the people that you work with. Yeah. Has there been anyone that talked to you about being suicidal because of a broken home? I'll give you a quick real life example. This is probably about five years ago. Yeah. So I'm in my studio. Um, again, the art room at the Summer News Center. And I'm working with a young lady who's about 16. She's making her work. Mm. And, you know, she's we're playing music. The room is just really relaxed and chilled and just being very creative. Mm. And then she gets a phone call. And I remember watching her walk out of the room. And then she came back. And you could tell the distressed signs on her face. On her face. And I just turned to her and I asked, I was like, you know, what's wrong? Um, has something happened? Is everything okay? And she wouldn't, she wouldn't talk. Um, and then she walked out again and then came back. And then she did for the third time and I thought, you know what, I need to get this thing out of her, whatever it is. Mm. Now, of course, I didn't have to care because mm. I'm there doing my art or we're, doing, we're, we're, we're having fun doing art. Mm. But I just probed. I had a feeling to just probe, so I did. And she said to me, Eugene, I have a friend on the other side, you know. Um, she said, by tomorrow morning, her mother's going to find her dead. Wow. And you can imagine my heart just jumped. It's, it's like I just had this kind of drop. Like, yeah. Um, and, and and I remember thinking, like, did I actually just hear what she just said? Mm -hmm. And I said, Are you? Did you just say what you just said? She said, Yes. My friend just said to me that my my mom she's gonna overdose, and you know my mom will find me dead tomorrow. And I was like, Okay, okay. Just 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 ask your friend to hold on. All right. Just, just ask your friend to hold on. So, um, she held on. She put the phone down, and I said. Let's come up with a plan. You have to tell your friend and your friend has to stop right, mm. what they're about to do. So I spoke to her and I just gave her a really encouraging words. And I said, S just say to your friend, you know, um, it's okay. You can come to see her, you know, um, you, you're, 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 you know, she should just, you, you know, make time for her to just speak to you. Because the more mm. she speaks, the better she will yeah. feel. Um, so we came up with a little plan and she went up spoke to her friend for about 25 minutes and I remember thinking like is this working is it not working anyway to cut it short she came back and she said Eugene she's accepted um, that's good for me to visit her tonight it was very late but you know the plan was you know you have to go see Just her to get out she didn't yeah. go to see her and um, she spoke to her and I remember about three four months ago you know um, seeing the two of them mm, um, wow, that's good and um, you can imagine when such a thing happens your mind goes back and you think wow um, maybe if it wasn't for that moment, moment when you spoke yeah. to her, you she know, would I don't have been know. dead by now. But you know, she might not be walking on the face of the earth. Mm. So it's you know, like you, you hear traumatic things, and your heart just wants to kind of embrace, and you just want to help. You know, it's just mm. yeah. Thank you. Well done on that. No, thank you. Well done. You know, Geisha. You know, while I was doing some research last night about stuff and all this, and you know, I found that research has shown that child development or child behavior can be affected by a number of things, but the big factor of it is the parent. I'm right. Absolutely. The big factor is the parent. You know, parents have impact on in the life of the children, whether they're married or not. 
So when I see mosquito on the street going astray, the first thing that comes to my mind is, where is your parent? That's the first question I ask. Where is the parent? Then the next thing you heard is either the parents are no more together, they're in the foster care, they stay in that. And I'm like, as a parent, what can we do to help our kids? Whether they're married or not. You know, we need to we we need to stop this thing of broken home is affecting lives. You know, it doesn't matter if you're with a dad or if you're with a mom. But there is a way we can come together to help our kids to make the right decision. So what do you think as a parent that they need to do? I think the guidance and what was very good about my mother was that she she did let me be myself. And she did her best to to try and make me feel proud because she knew that my father he didn't want me. So th th this was quite important. I think that, that that was also why I didn't lose my way completely. Wow. Well, because she she did guide me and she she showed me I could I could do stuff in the world. Now did you feel by without no one thing or how did you feel about that one? I always wondered why. I always thought, is it because I'm ugly? Is it because I'm I'm different, or or what? What is that? Well, he could not have known, could he? Yeah, but you know what? You're mm -hmm. not ugly, mm -hmm. and no one exactly. is actually. No one is ugly. Absolutely. We are all different, and we have our mm -hmm. own unique ways. Absolutely. Nobody has a right to come say to you you're ugly. Nobody mm -hmm. has a right to come say to me that mm -hmm. I'm ugly. The only thing I can say to you, you are different in your own way. Right. You are unique. I'm different. I mm. am me. I am unique. And Absolutely. that's me. And that should be who you are. You mm. are not ugly. Your dad should be proud of who you are. Because me, I am very proud of who you are. Thank you. You're welcome. And you're beautiful, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> you're welcome. So, one thing I want to ask is, has there been any kids that have been involved in life and gone because of a broken home that you've come across? Absolutely. Um, so, again, I set up a, a, a huge project at the Salmon Youth Centre, which was called Reclaim Memories Lived. Um, wow. So it was about reclaiming, you know, um, it was about reclaiming lives, it was about reclaiming the good things, it was about reclaiming the things that matter, um, the things that are still living. Mm. And. Um, you can imagine when it was open, the exhibition, we, we had the whole public coming in and yeah. um, the, the reaction was incredible. Mm. Um, and we did have some young people, you could tell we're standing, for example, in the corner, um, looking a little bit shaky. Mm. And, you know, some of us did ask them, like, you know, why are you OK type of thing? And, mm. you know, stories come out, you know. And I remember one particular young man said to me that, you know, standing in front of the artwork has somehow made me feel what the victims' families feel. Mm. And I remember thinking to myself, wow. Um, and he wasn't the first person. I had, or we had probably about eight, nine young people, both female and male, um, saying all these things. And this same young man um, actually did say later that um, because of what he felt, it was making him really consider his ways, his friendships, and you know, he was secretly carrying weapons. So he would come to this youth center and mix up with all the other young people, play, you know, and seem almost innocent without us or without the people who weren't there knowing. Mm. Um, but for him to kind of, you know, confess such a thing, I think is incredibly powerful. It is. But this is, this is exactly why art is so important. It is. And this is why we do it the way we do it. Mm. Because to be honest, um, if it was just a picture on the wall, because your mind, your heart has seen it and is so used to it, you would look and you would walk away. You're right. But you do it in other ways. If you do it with intelligence, you do it with psychology, knowing what people are like, you can get deep into people. And if it can bring out such stuff, I think that's just incredible, you know, an incredible thing to you do. You know, to me, this is beautiful because on a normal day, the only time I look at people dressed this way, it's an Halloween day. <laughs> so on a special day, then I happen to be walking on the street and, I, you know, 
I, I walked across, I came across your boat, I would want to stop you and ask you questions, believe me. Because I know it's unusual for someone to dress like this, except it's an Halloween day. So me as a person, believe me, I will stop you and ask you, where are you going, what are you doing, where are you coming from? And I just want to know the reason for yeah, this. Absolutely. And which you think it's important to ask yes. questions, because it is, it is. if you don't ask, yeah. you will know. Exactly. Yeah. And you know, you came in earlier with a box. Yes, I And did. I wanted to ask, what is the box all about? So this box was originally, um, by the way, it's titled Knife Edge. Knife Edge. Knife Edge. Um, wow. And I'll explain in a second. Um, this box was made like a, um, as, as part of this exhibition I mentioned. Yeah. And um, what I wanted to do was to take the exhibition off the wall and to put it on a case. Mm -hmm. So when I say a case, um, I'm using it metaphorically. So, you know, you take a case to court, yeah. um, or you take a case, and the, the word case has, um, what's the word? It, 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 has, it can sometimes have a negative connotation because it makes you think there's a problem. Mm. So, the problem is what I've put on the box. Um, so, what you have here is um, our, you know, some of the victims, oh. um, especially I think of 2017 and 2018 in London who were stabbed. Oh, um, oh. wow. Oh. You know, so, oh. again, I'm reminding people that it's a crime. That's why you have the police tape on there. And on here, you have this image. And if I turn it upside down, you can see London skyline on there. Yeah. Um, so basically, it's just communicating um, the situation in London at the moment and how London is a knife edge. It's almost like the, the knife is deciding on people's futures. Um, that's what the case is. Can you just show this side and raise it yes, up? Yes, absolutely. The other side. You know, this is really, really heartbreaking to watch if you're looking at this right now. Mm -hmm. You know, just, this, it, it, oh God, it's just way too much. This is really heartbreaking. Everyone on this poster, on this box are all dead. They're all dead, yeah, they're all victims. They're all dead. So now you see, as a mother and as a father, we have a lot of work to do in the lives of our children. This is important. Someone give birth to all these kids, but they're not here today. Why? Simply because our parents neglected us. They neglected us, they, they, they forget who we are, they forget what we want to be, what our needs are. If we have not been neglected, believe me, all these kids will yeah. still be here today. Yeah. You know, there's a lot about parents that they need to do in kids' life. As a mother, as a father, you have a lot to do in your children's life. You know, your child can just wake up one man and say to you, Dad, I'm going to see my friend. A boy that is 12, 13, 14, even up to the age of 16. And as a parent, you don't even know where your son or daughter are going to. You don't know who, the, who their friends are. You don't, know the, you don't know where their friend lives. You don't know what they do in their house. And all you just say to them, bye, make sure you're home at 6 o'clock. This is wrong. The way we do things in our house is different from the way they do things in their own house. If you want to be truly involved in your children's life, believe me, the support, the monitor you give them does not need to end at home. It has to be extended outside. You need to go to their friend's house, introduce yourself to their parents, know the kind of friends they work with, know their circles, know where they're going to. Not, don't just be concerned about the time they comes back home. Invite your friends to the house. Invite their parents over for dinner. You know, parents need to be involved in their kid's life. This is one of the things that cause a broken home. If you're not there for them, who is going to be there for them? I've seen kids that are not involved in gang at all, they are dead today. Do you know why? Because of the circles they belong. Because of their friends. Because as a parent, you didn't take time out to know who their friends are. 
and later you start crying, you start screaming, my son, my daughter, is, yes, they are good kids, but as their friends are. The ones who they call their friends are they good kids. Do you know what they do in their homes? So how do we stop this? How do we stop this crime? How do we stop this gun and knives? How do we stop this broken home? I'm happy for Geisha here. I am from a broken home. And I made, I made serious, terribly bad decisions in my life. There are things I should have done back years ago. But you know what? I'm here today because I got a second chance. Not everybody to get a second chance. I'm here today. I made sure that I didn't, I, I, I didn't let the broken home affect my life, affect my journey. Even though I gave up some years ago. But then I realized this is not me. This is not where I want to be. And I start fighting for myself. I start fighting for who I want to be. And today I'm glad I'm following the right direction. A broken home is a broken child. And the broken child is as a result of the failure of our parents. Believe me. You train up your child the way you're supposed to train up your child. Don't say because they are 12, because they are 13, because they are 14, they are old enough to do anything. They are never old enough. As old as I am, my mom still talks to me. My mom still corrects me when I'm wrong. There are times uh, I go to my mom, mom, you know what, I don't know what else to do. Even though I am a mother. I am a mother myself, I've got a 10 year old daughter. But at times I still get it wrong. Absolutely. But when our parents are not there, who do I want to go and meet? You don't know if I'm going to give your child the right or the wrong advice. Which is why it is important for every mother, every parent to be involved in their kid's life. Irrespective of their opinion or their choices or if they don't want to be together, even if they are divorced. We still have to be there for them. Can you show that hope again? Yes. Look at that. Look at that. These are someone's children. Look at that. They are not here today. They are not here today. I don't want anyone to write our appeal on my daughter. It's a really, really sad thing for a mother to lose a child. Look at them. And some beautiful but they are not here today as a result of what? Most especially broken homes. Look at them. They are not here today. This is so sad. This is sad. We don't want this anymore. This is a result of neglection, you know, bad gangs. Your child will never be too old for you to talk to. They are your child. They will never be too old for you to talk to. Thank you. Thank you so much. That, that, that's so sad to watch, you know. And how do you think we can help other kids that are going through this? You know, mm -hmm. we need a lot of kids to yeah, come out. Of course. To voice out. Yeah. You know, we don't want them joining the bad gangs. Yeah. You know, we need them to know there is a right place for them to be. Right, there are yeah. people that are willing to help them to get yeah. on the right path. There are people that are willing to help them discover yeah. their talents. Right. So how do you think we can go about this and help more kids, more children on the yeah. streets? I think, um, you know, Ge Geisha says something very... Um, oh, we've got a phone call. Got a call. Okay. Uh, that's too far. Mm -hmm. I think we lost it. Okay. I think Geisha raised a really important point earlier, that her mother helped her. Her mm. mother gave her the confidence mm. and did not judge her. And I think this is the point of reference that um, most parents need to look at. Mm. Um, a lot of parents have the habit or the, the need to kind of almost decide what they think their child is going to become. Mm. And I think if your child is 
young and you're suggesting and you know wanting to prompt them to see what they're good at or what they have in their minds there's nothing wrong in that yeah but first of all do not tell them your, do not tell your child they're going to become a doctor mm. you know do not tell if you're saying it as a way of being positive i think again it's a great thing it is but there's a clear line between being positive and actually trying to almost infiltrate the mind of your child mm. and i think this is where things go wrong if again if i can use the, the doctor as an example if you tell your child, you know, you have to become a doctor, you have to become a doctor, mm. and yet the, the child is interested in dance. Mm. The day they tell you they want to be a dancer, you will most probably be disappointed. You're right. If you are disappointed, mm. what do you think will happen to your facial expressions? They will see it. They'll be able to read through you. Mm -hmm. If they read through you and they realize that you're disappointed, mm. it will make them feel low, even if they do not tell you. If they feel low, what does that lead to? They will go tell somebody else who would accept it. As you said, that person may not be the person they need to speak to because that person may see the vulnerability and they might guide them in a different direction. So parents need to accept. Uh, I will have to pick that. Thank you. Hello, good afternoon. Hello, good afternoon. Yeah, what's your name My and where are you calling from? Felicia. My name is Felicia, calling from Dagenham. Oh, thank you for joining today. And what's your question and who is your question for? Um, I just want to encourage you to continue with this show because oh. this is a show that can highlight our children. Thank you this very much. This is a show that can bring in back our children. This is a show that can bring all our youth, take them out from the streets mm. and can unite them, mm. you know. I so much like this program and I just want to encourage you to continue with this program. It's a very, very good program mm. that can teach, especially the broken home, yeah. it can teach them, you know, mm. it can unite us back together. It can unite the, um, the, the children back to their parents. Because what is going on in, in, in our society is not encouraging it's, at all. Uh, it's it's not. not encouraging at all. It's not. So I just want to say thank you to you and well done for the good job doing. Thank May you God very much. To help your mom. Amen. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Bye. 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 Okay. So, sorry, as we were saying. That's okay. That's okay. Um, so, what I was just trying to say there is. Parents need to find um, what their children are interested in, and once they find it, you know, do genuinely um, be interested. You know, ask them questions, investigate what it is they want to be. You know, go on the net and just, I don't know, if, if your child wants to be a plumber, mm. find out the opportunities that are out there for a, a plumber. It doesn't have to fit with what you think. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, you may give birth to your child, but to mm. be honest, your child is supposed to have a different personality from or you will most probably mm. have a different personality You're from right. you and i think that acceptance is incredibly important mm. because what it does it, it means that your child will feel accepted yeah. um, and even if they were to change their mind later which is also okay mm. just to have your support and your guidance step by step is incredible because it just means that a child can even feel like they can make a mistake mm. without feeling like they're a failure, right? Yeah, that's good. Um, all of these things, I think, are so, so important. But be close to your child. Mm. As you said earlier, spend time with them. With them. And then, you know, let them be the, your, your little friend. And I think mm. all of these things will go a long way to prevent, preventing them from either being depressed or even getting you know, involved in the wrong um, crowd. Oh, thank you very much. And Keisha, I'm going to ask you, what would you do differently from what our parents are doing now? You know, generally speaking, to distract or prevent young people from juvenile delinquency, you know, in other words, youth crime. So, what would you do differently? I would give hope in mm. within these children and show them that they can do stuff because a lot of the time, I think all of the time, when children are doing delinquent stuff, it's because they haven't got anything to do. I think mm. that. There needs to be more communities, there needs to be more parks, there needs to be more things for children. I had more things to do <coughs> when I was a child than what I see the children to do now. Mm. So I, I think that, that that's an issue that needs to be looked into. Mm. Right. Absolutely. Thank you. And um, you know, once again, I'm going to say to the viewers and to every parent watching me out there, please, we are begging every parent to support 
to support your children in whatever they want to do. You know, we beg you, let them discover their talent, let them be who they want to be. At least if you know they are making sense. You know, don't impose your own on them. Mm -hmm. They are mm -hmm. different from you. Ask them questions, ask them what you want to do, what do you want to be. And if you see they are not making sense, try talk to them. You know, take them a lot of places to visit. Let them watch documentaries. You know, you know, is we are this generation we have. We give our children iPads to go on YouTube to watch so many cartoon shows, rather than teaching them stuff they are supposed to know. How many parents sit their kids down to watch documentary with them? How many parents? But we have parents who want to watch the latest movie. <laughs> How many parents sit at the end of the weekend like, what have you done in school? Come, let's go through this together. You said you want to be what? You want to be a sea gynecologist? You want to be this? Okay, you know what? I did some research. I want us to watch together. But we don't have parents doing all this anymore. We need our kids back. We need this generation. We need to give this generation hope. We need to give them hope. We need to give them something to look forward to. You know, like I said, I came from a broken home and I can tell you up to today, it still haunts me when I think back about the wrong decision Absolutely. I've made in the past. Why? Because we have two grown-up adults who couldn't put their differences aside for my sake. And I should have done the most important thing in their life at that moment because I was young. I don't know what to do. Anything I'm being asked to do is what I would do, is what I feel is the right thing to do. I'm begging parents, please put your differences aside. Put it aside, put it aside, put it aside for the sake of these children. They need our help. Teachers at school can do it all for them. The teachers can do it all. We as a parent, we have the major tax in their life to do. Thank God for our life. If not because of our mom, she wouldn't be here today. If she hadn't met Eugene, she would be somewhere else. But I like the way she was talking about her mother, how her mother stood for her, how her mother feel, how her mother made her feel she's important. That's right. And meeting the right people, of course. Your mother can be there for you, but if you are following the wrong set of people outside, you won't achieve what you want to achieve. So which is why it is important as a parent, we need to know where our kids go to, who are their friends. Like me, my daughter, she's in year five. If you know how many times I've asked a class teacher to change a seat for me, because when she comes home, she tells me stuff I don't like. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, where did you hear this? Oh, my friend from my class. Okay. Your table, or the, she says, Mommy, I sit on the right table. And I'm like, is it from the right table, blue or yellow? From red table. The moment she said to me, red table, I go to the school the following day and I say to them, I want my daughter to change from the red table to the yellow table. Mm -hmm. Because for the past few weeks, she's been coming home with stuffs and ideas mm -hmm. that I know it's not right for her. I don't want to know who that person is on that red table, but I know I'm doing the right thing by my daughter by telling the class teacher to please change a seat. We need to listen to our children more. We need to focus on them. We need to help them grow. We need to, we need to get involved. 
you know when I see things like this or when I watch the news and I see so many teenagers so many youth died true as a result of knife and gun I cried I cried a lot that when is this going to stop as a parent we can monitor all their movement but there is a lot we can still do don't only look for them at home look for them outside as well please we need to dig deep in our kids life I thank God for their lives today he discovered himself and is helping a lot through his talents I just want to say thank you and I want to commend you on a job well done. Thank you. Thank you so much. You know, I want to thank you for how many lives, for the lives of people that you've saved through this. And I know you're going places with this. I can see it already, believe me. I can see it, I can feel it already. Thank you for the lives you've put back in the right direction. Thank you for the life you've saved. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. You're doing a really, really good job. I commend you and I applaud you for this. Thank you very much. Thank you thank so you. much. Thank God you. bless you. you. And you know, thank you so much for not thinking you're ugly. Thank you for not thinking because my dad does not want me. Then I have to give up. Thank you for not giving up. You are a queen. Hey Queen, you're gonna be someone's mother tomorrow. You're gonna be someone's wife. You're gonna be somebody people look up to in the future. You are already, not you will be. You are. We've got kids. We've got teenagers are looking up to you. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you for choosing the right direction. Even. Thank you. Thank you for making everything everything right by yourself. We've got people from a broken home that do not have the chance to be here today. We've got people from broken home that have made the wrong decision for themselves, that have gone on the wrong path. But you are able to stand and stay on the right path in respect of all odds. I want to say thank you so much. I applaud you. I hope every teenager, every youth out there that are watching this can take one or two things from my guest. You know what? Don't give up. A broken home shouldn't be the end of your life. In fact, I want you to let that broken home to make you stronger. Because of that, I want you to fight for that thing that you want to be. Because of that, I want you to make a difference. I want you to stand out and be proud of who you are. I am a product of broken home, but I am here today. I am who I want to be. They are who they want to be. Do not give up because of a broken home. A broken home shouldn't be the end of your life. In fact, it should be the start of your life. It should be the start of wanting something good for yourself. If you are out there, you're thinking of a suicidal attempt, you're thinking of, you know, you're in depression because of broken up. I'm saying to you, you can get out if you want to. Call the studio, call the line on the screen. We can put you back in the right, in the right direction. These are people that can help you. They've helped a lot of lives and they're still helping. Please do not give up. I'm gonna say it once I'm gonna say it once again. Please do not give up. Do not give up on life. You can be something, you can be who you want to be. And thank you so much for watching. We'll be back next week. And I promise next week I will be on time. Or we will be on time. It was due to traffic. Thank you so much. And for the lady Alicia that called in from Dagenham, I want to say thank you. That was a lovely comment from you. Thank you so much. You can call in after the show. You can leave your comments. If you have anything to say, if you need help, get in touch with us in our studio. The phone number to call is on the screen. We are here for you. We are here to help you. Thank you so much for watching today. I still remain your lovely, humble, beautiful, wonderful host, Josephine. 
I will be here same time next week and thank you for watching. Bye for now. My daughter in law, so how are you planning for my son's birthday? No, 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 I have to cook up for her. Do you people have a grease there? No. It's okay. Okay, let me call you back. Wait, Mama, she's okay. Hi, sir. Wait a minute. Please pack some more grease. I am going to visit my son. <laughs> my daughter in law, it's arranged, but you must use original red oil to prepare the soup. What? I'll call you back. <laughs> Mama Chijo, please include Isio Boroko, eh, my daughter-in-law. Everything is now set. But don't forget that gold watch I saw the last time I visited her. Now you can talk until you tire for just 11 cup of a second. Call all networks in Nigeria and 30 international destinations, including US, UK, China, Canada, and India for just 11 cup of a second. Dial star 211 hash to activate. That's silk bubbles. The largest data network. Glow. Grandmasters of data. Heritage, heritage television. television. Promoting African culture and heritage at its best. From talk shows that concern you to both local and international news that relates to you. From grassroots football to African children's programs. Heritage Television. We cover your social and special events like weddings, birthdays, church anniversaries and so on and broadcast them live on our apps and online. Heritage Television. Broadcasting everything about culture and heritage. Heritage, heritage Television. Television. We've got, We've it, got covered. it covered. Do download our apps on both Android, iOS, and Windows mobile platform. Heritage, Heritage Television, Television, your very, your own, very own TV, TV station. station.